There are very few things a baseball fan likes more than a cool home run. Doesn't matter who's hitting them. It could be Brock Holt, Lane Kiffin, the robot dog from Jimmy Neutron. And in the era where most highlights can be found on Twitter just minutes after they happen, majestic home run clips can spread like wildfire. I would consider the man this video is about to be a pioneer of viral home run hitting. A guy who would regularly launch baseballs into orbit and they'd be there for the world to see the next morning on SportsCenter for you to marvel at. All the time. However, he's so much more than that. This is Mo Vaughn and he could crush baseballs. Mo with the bases loaded. And this ball is hit well down the right field line. It's out of here. The Red Sox win it. Oh, and guess what? Mo Vaughn's team invited me out to Vaughn Sports Academy in South Florida to pick his brain about his career and this exact subject matter. You're gonna get perspective from the man himself and all this too. So we do owe a huge thank you to the Vaughn Sports Academy team for this one. But before we go any further, if you enjoy what you see here today, please consider subscribing to the channel for more like this. Only about a quarter of you watching are subscribed to begin with, and it means more than you can even imagine. All right, now that that's out of the way. How would you categorize yourself as a player to someone who maybe has no idea about your career? I would categorize myself as, as a grinder. I was, uh, you know, a first baseman. I always had, you know, the physical size and strength to basically overpower the ball. But when I got to the big leagues in, in 91, you know, you really had to hone your technique. Mo Vaughn broke into the major leagues as a 23-year-old with the Boston Red Sox and was already dominating by 25. By 1993, he was a top 20 MVP finisher in the American League who had a 29 home run 101 RBI season to his name. His rate stats also looked great, as he'd get hits, get on base, and hit for multiple bases at very good clips. All that led to an OPS Plus of 139 in what was essentially his first full MLB season. OPS Plus is a stat that puts all hitters in league history on a level playing field by comparing them to their environments around them. It uses a scale where 100 is always average, and measures how good a hitter's on-base percentage and slugging percentage combined are to compare them to their peers. So this is a stat that can equalize a player from today with a player from the dead ball era, where pitchers could legally alter a baseball almost however they wanted and it would practically move like this. At 139, that made Mo Vaughn 39% better than the league average hitter in 1993 which is way above average. 1994 was even better, even if a player's strike cut the season off for good in mid-August. Point is, going into 1995, Mo Vaughn was a rising star. He would leave the 1995 season holding the American League Most Valuable Player Award trophy over some exceptional competition too, namely amazing years from Edgar Martinez, Albert Bell, Randy Johnson, and his teammate John Valentin. How does it feel to have the honor of, you know, actually having the trophy with that competition? It's validating. Um, when you win an MVP, I think one of my biggest things was making an all-star game. When you sit in that room with all those players, it, it, it starts to really validate. But once you get some type of hardware, you know, as Roger Clemens would call it, you know, you get some, you know, put some hardware by your name, it gives you that confidence, especially when things are going well. You, you seek those things inside of you that you did that when, when, when greatness was there and it gave me the strength when things weren't going well there's something I could reach towards. 1995 would set new career highs for Vaughn in home runs with 39 and runs batted in with 126. 300 hitters who also hit 39 home runs in a season are to be cherished. There are very few of them around baseball. Vaughn was doing it, leading one of the American League's top teams that year. If there's one message Mo seemed to want to get across to me, it's that his values and his mindset as a hitter were way more than just home runs. We all hit for average. We always hit for average and power. It wasn't just going up there swinging. You look at guys that are that drive in 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 RBIs in a career, they know, they have a plan of what they're doing at the plate. And I felt that if I did that, I was gonna hit my home runs. I tried to play as many games. I knew that if I walked to the plate at, you know, uh, you know, each year would get my 600 at bats, that I was gonna hit 300 and I was gonna hit 30 home runs and I was gonna drive in 100 runs. But the, 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 the key to any good team and any good player is availability. 
You know, you walk to, to the plate 600 times a year and you get those at bats in. After five, six years, seven years, it's, it's, it's becoming like clockwork, knowing the situations, knowing the pitchers, and just your mind becomes so strong and you understand the situation very well, you're able to capitalize in many, many ways just from, from being there over and over again. But don't get me wrong, his bombs were impressive. I'm going to give him credit where credit's due there. Here's His swing had such controlled violence to it, and he was so consistently able to just drive aesthetically pleasing moonshots out of every park he stepped foot in. He also stole 11 bases in his MVP year, which is just crazily unexpected, considering he'd never have more than four in any other year of his career. About as unexpected as Ashy Larry from Chappelle's show name-dropping former lefty reliever Buddy Groom on The Wire. Who's pitching? Buddy Groom? Vaughn did go hitless in the Red Sox brief 1995 playoff run, something he held himself very accountable for to the media, and to me as well. Of course, you know, you think about it, I had, I had my worst playoff series, I think I went over 15 or 16. I came back in, in, in 98 and had a, had a better, better series. It's always a, a, a learning process. It's, you have to always internalize and learn that's, that's what's gonna make you better. I think all those things, you know, make me what I am as a coach. Now, um, you know, are all those inexperience, all those experience, all those failures. You don't really learn too much by when things are going well. You learn things when things are going poorly and you gotta be able to internalize those things and figure out how to get better. While the Red Sox real playoff success wasn't there for about another decade or so, Vaughn's personal growth continued throughout the 90s. Vaughn drove in 143 runs in 1996, which as of right now, no one has done since 2008. The first Space Chimps movie came out in 2008, man. That's a really long time since someone's had a Mo Vaughn-like RBI season. His home run total also increased to 44 and his OPS plus to 150. Every one of his rate stats improved as well, which is all the more impressive when you learn he played all but one game in the 1996 season. His efforts and continued excellence in baseball demolition got him another top 5 AL MVP vote finish. 1997 and 98 each progressively saw his OPS Plus rise as well, with 1998 giving him another all-star appearance and top 5 MVP vote finish. I think, you know, when I won the MVP, I came back in 96, 97, 98, probably had better years than I did my MVP year. He also set a career high in batting average in 1998 by hitting 337, which as of today, no one has done in a full season in almost five years. Here's a five-year-old meme really quick. The numbers do show remarkable consistency once he hit his stride in Boston. He was easily one of the best hitters and the best first baseman in the game at a time where he was surrounded by legendary competition as well. Something he's very aware of and is very proud of. Oh man, just look at my 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 position at first base. There was McGuire, Will Clark, Rafael Palmero, Frank Thomas, Cecil Fielder, Jim Tomey. I mean, you just look at that that just those names right there. These guys could 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 really play baseball and hit a baseball. And you had to be on top of your game to be considered. You know, talked about in that realm. So it was always um a tremendous amount of competition, um, and, and, it, and it was friendly. Um, I don't think guys uh, were, were, were at each other's throats, but you know, you walk on the field each night, you knew there was another guy across from you that could do the same thing you could do, and you wanted to keep that level up. After that 1998 season, Mo left Boston to sign one of the biggest contracts in league history at the time with the Anaheim Angels. Also, Angels, please bring these uniforms back, they're amazing. It does very much bother me to say that Moe's career from this point forward was defined by injuries. He got hurt on his very first play as an Angel, he missed all of the 2001 season with an injury, and his career ended because of injury in 2003. But what people fail to understand was that he still produced when he was healthy enough to be on the field. And just to prove he still had it in him, there was no shortage of beautiful looking home runs to pick from when putting all the footage together in editing.
say, boy, I suggest there be one around. Mo is 20. That is crushed. Upper deck for Mo. You know, guys that hit home runs, we, we, we remember most of them, especially the key ones. Looking back the next day when you wake up, it's, it's nice to see. It keeps you going, no doubt. I did, however, save my favorite Mo Vaughn bomb to highlight for last. The words I told Mo to his face were, As a Mets fan, I've seen this home run more times than I can count. You ready? When you hit something very well, you don't feel it. The guy was kind of thrown from three quarters, different than on top. He kind of was still thrown from here. So I could see the ball really well. It came to my bat. I just remember getting, you know, getting the bat head there and really not feeling anything. And seeing the ball travel, um, you go, man, that was, that was one of my better shots I've, I've ever hit. So it was, it's nice, you know, listen, I didn't play like I wanted to play when I was in New York, but I still did some things. And, you know, being from that area, it was, it was, it was a good shot in time at that time. The scoreboard estimated right after he did this that the ball traveled 505 feet off the bat. That is just an ungodly destruction of a baseball right there. But to him, while it was a cool feeling, he was just glad the ball went over the fence. Do the emotions change at all when you hit one close to 500 versus one that maybe just gets over the outfielder's glove or is a home run a home run to you? Absolutely not. They're all the same. I don't care if they hit the top of the wall and, and get over. If, if, if it's strength, the defense is 380 and it goes 382, it's the same thing as it going 420 or 460. You're just glad to make that type of contact and, and, and hit the ball over the wall. Moe's career ended about a year after this happened. He would not go down as a Hall of Famer, and the Red Sox would finally come through and win a title in his first year out of the league, which he still loved because he loves the Sox just that much. I think all those things made me a better player knowing that, you know, I had to come to the ballpark ready to play because the Boston fans knew the game and, and they weren't going to accept anything less but effort and hustle. I think that was, 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 was critical for me be, being what I was. Any player that, that had any significant time of service for the Red Sox, when we won in two thirds of 2004, we all were partying. We all were happy. We all were, were thankful that it finally happened because we knew what we were all trying to do when we get there, but these guys did it and we're very happy for them. There were four main takeaways I had from the opportunity of spending a day with Mo Vaughn. One, his media reputation of being a good guy holds up. It was a huge part of his image during his career, and I can honestly say it checks out. Two, while I'm going to consistently give him his flowers for being a terrific home run hitter, he was a lot more than that. He took a lot of pride in being a complete hitter, and took even more pride in being a guy who would play every day and lead by example there. Three. Mo loves baseball. He loves baseball's past, he loves the era he played in, and he loves baseball to this day. We're very, very lucky. We're grown men playing a great kid's game, but we also have to look at the history. I noticed above the door to his office that there's a Jackie Robinson signed jersey by Jackie's wife, Rachel, and then it clicked. Mo Vaughn will forever go down as the final African-American player to wear Jackie's number 42. It's retired league-wide now. It will never be worn again. Mo Vaughn was one of the last in general and the last African-American player to carry that torch of the man who broke baseball's infamous color barrier. His breaking the color barrier of baseball set the stage for, 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 for a lot of different events to happen. It was the first thing that happened, you know, and then came on, you know, all these Jim Crow and all these other things happened, you know, after Jackie Robinson, you know, broke the color barrier. So it was, him uh, was a was a a a super event in history that really started to to propel this world. I assume Jackie's why you picked number forty two as well, correct? Absolutely. Um, my college coach uh, Nick Bonus at Seton Hall, he wore the number. He's a white guy too. And he told me, you know, you need to wear this number. This is this is the things that you've done and you've shown me already in your life. And you need to 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 walk and 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 try to try to do some of the things that this guy did. It's great to be, you know, uh, a carrier of a great man. And finally, while his past as a successful baseball player is clearly defined, he's got a great outlook for his future. 
We, I, you know, I own and operate over 20,000 units of affordable housing across the country, um, creating quality life for, for, for generations in, in multi-family housing projects, changing people's living environments. Um, it's very, very important in life. And I also think that that's helped me, you know, in VSA Academy, um, trying to put all these different people together to do things and everybody working on the same page and to get to a common goal. And Vaughn Sports Academy exists to help the next generation of players train and get better, and I admire that. And to take it one step further, he cares about being a good role model for his own kids. And I think being a father, uh, you know, all those things has helped me, you know, have a perspective on everything that can help, you know, my daughter and my son become better people. Being a good role model is something he's placed emphasis on for 30 plus years anyway, which is really impressive. I want to say thank you again to Mo Vaughn and Vaughn Sports Academy for inviting me down and helping me tell his story. The goal was to chronicle his career for future generations like mine who never actually saw him play with our own two eyes but have plenty of highlights to look back on. He took pride in his consistency both on and off the field, but don't get it twisted, this man could mash.